President Trump uh, tweeting uh, about trade last night, in this case in reference to our farmers, uh, saying that starting Monday, our great farmers can begin doing business again with Mexico and Canada. They have both uh, taken the tariff penalties off uh, your great agricultural uh, products, and that's the, the easing uh, as things got worse. I guess uh, in our relations with China, looks like the Trump administration sort of backed off on some of the other uh, tariffs that helped the markets a little bit uh, a couple of times last week. I don't know about this. President Trump also tweeting a warning to Iran. In his words: If Iran wants to fight, that will be the official end of Iran. Uh, never threaten the United States again. The tweet comes amid rising tensions with Iran. The U.S. has dispatched a carrier a strike group and bomber task force uh, to the region, and that's been sort of move, got, you know, it seemed like it was more serious and less serious, and tensions have, uh, I don't know, we've made some more conciliatory comments recently, and right. Iran has uh, sort of backed off a little. I don't know if anyone Arabia really... Arabia making some yeah. comments through all of this, too. Right. Uh, Ian, what do you think, just in terms of what you've seen so far from the trade dispute, from any of these other sorts of issues that pop up? Has it had an impact on the economy yet? Uh, not so much yet, but, you know, the uncertainty, if it goes on, I think everyone's focused, like we were just hearing from Eunice, everyone's focused on this June summit, June 28, 29 in Osaka. And I kind of think if there's no deal there and the rhetoric is still very bellicose, markets are, are going to really struggle over the summer because there's a lot of hopes invested in the idea that this was just like a, a final skirmish and you know, they're eventually going to do a deal. I, the tech thing is definitely a complication, uh, the, the, the Huawei thing. But really, I don't think it's the core of the issue. And I'm still pretty hopeful that there's grounds for a deal. But uh, this June, end June summit, I think, if nothing's happened by then, I think people are going to really start to worry it's going to drag on and on. Do you think this upsets those talks, though? The Huawei piece, even though it's not maybe yeah. be core or maybe a separate issue, yeah. it gets worked into these conversations given how important it is to the country. Uh, sure, it's going to go on very badly with, with uh, China's leadership. But again, you know, there's a, there's a much bigger, much bigger game at stake here. You know, this is a you know, Chinese trade is what, 600 billion with the US every year. Huawei is, and it's, it's a piece, but it's not a gigantic piece of that. And I, I suspect that they thought this was coming at some point because. You know, this talk about Chinese uh, ability to disrupt, you know, European and U.S. Uh, networks has been bubbling away for a long time. I can't imagine it came as a total surprise to them. I mean, I remember British Telecom pulling some of the Huawei stuff out. Yeah. I think it was in December. I remember hearing the announcements yeah. about some of those things, too. Yeah. So this, this is yeah. it's not a complete surprise. No, I mean... Huawei I, planning on this for a couple of years. They, they must have plan. been. They must have been. But, but as we heard, they don't have an operating system that's good to go. Right. And meanwhile, not so much here, but in, in Europe, there's millions of, of owners of Huawei smartphones mm -hmm. who presumably now have just got a, a useless piece of metal and glass in their hand yeah, because brick. they're right. done. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Are they going to are they going to sue them or uh, sue Google? Or, uh, it, this is yeah, such a Google, mess. Google's following what the U.S. is kind of yeah. signed off on saying. Yeah, but it's uh, it's very difficult if you just spend a thousand dollars on a Huawei phone.